it's, it's loading. Hi guys, we're back for another night with another amazing, wonderful woman of God. I met Sonia here uh, through online again, but we connected in spirit. Sonia Curtis is a native of Hollywood. She has experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit in 1995 at a home church with people who walked closely with the prophet Lonnie Frisbee until his death. She has mm -hmm. served in youth, worship, and prayer ministry since 1995. She served as a youth pastor under the Apostle Al Forneth from 1999 to 2001, where she experienced power, signs, and wonders. In 2001, she met the prophet Sean Bowles, who came to watch her teach an acting class in Hollywood. Sean prophesied over her being a front runner in Hollywood. Currently, Sonia has been serving at Expression 58 Church on the prayer team, as well as leading a home group for the industry Hollywood for the past two years. Sonia started Power, Love, and Fire Ministries in 2019, a prophetic apostolic ministry to help the saints get equipped with knowledge and power for the last days. Welcome, Sonia. It's so Thank wonderful. You. <laughs> Thank I'm so glad you could come out and be with us tonight. It's an honor. Thank you for asking me. <clears throat> I'm glad I could be here too. I guys, I wore my hat tonight. Bad hair day. Oh. <laughs> my sister will be like. Sonia's going to go get her hat, too. She feels I, it, she my, I do. I want to wear a hat now, but I go, oh well, it is what it is. Maybe I'll wear a hat later. <laughs> oh, you can get comfortable, and then you can just go get a hat, right? Okay. So, so let's start with the – it's amazing to me because I've been to Hollywood with my family, and it's rare, just like it's rare where we live, to find someone who's born in Calgary, like, or lived or grew up in – the area where we're from, you grew up in Hollywood. Wow. Tell us what this was like. <laughs> we'll go more into the spiritual impact of this later. Okay. But tell us kind of like what it was like as a young girl and child to grow up there. Well, um, my my dad grew up uh, working as a stuntman in Hollywood. And so, you know, we were used to him going on sets and doing movies and TV shows and, um, you know, hanging out with some celebrities, the, the main celebrities that he would work with regularly. And so there was kind of an excitement growing up. I just knew that that was kind of exciting and different. You know, not all the kids got to have that experience. But then I also had friends growing up that were in the entertainment industry since we were, you know, so close to it. And, um, yeah, it was it was interesting. I mean, my my home, my dad was a Christian and my mom was a Christian and um so I think they were trying to keep our lives a little more normal. You know, my dad worked, my mom was a stay-at-home mom and we went to church on Sunday and dad went off to work, but there was a little bit of that kind of we knew there was something special about the work my dad did that not everybody got to go on movie sets and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that must have been exciting though did you meet anybody yeah robert wagner yeah he was my, uh, my father's main um actor that he doubled for a lot and robert shaw and Sidney poitier oh yes um yeah. yeah and who else did we meet oh my gosh there were a few oh stephanie um the lady that was on heart to heart with robert wagner right yeah. i yeah. can't remember her name right now sorry i have a headache today Figures. <laughs> we just pray for that headache to be healed. Go oh, in Jesus' name. And we pray for God to be here with us tonight. And it's interesting that it's, oh, that's my daughter saying sexy mama here, Kirsten, because I can't see her. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. She, she's saying that for you too. I know it. Oh, thank you. Yes, sexy mama hair for sure. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I know. I know what it's like to be in Hollywood and to experience those so curses. She's there right now to experience the level of stuff and then to walk in the authority. We're going to that later, but I just pray that God will just give you freedom in this headache in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So your dad was in the industry. Did you have siblings? Yes, I have a brother and a sister and uh, neither of them really wanted to get into it. I did. I always knew as a young girl I wanted to be an actress. 
and um, told my dad I wanted to. And my brother became a fireman. And my sister um, did a bunch of different things. But now she administers the chemotherapy and radiation for cancer patients. Oh. I think the radiation. Yeah. Very yeah. different. In, are they in L.A.? Did they move nope. away? No. Nope. Well, my brother's in a, a suburb out, just outside of L.A. in Santa Clarita. And my uh, sister lives in Connecticut. Wow, no. that is so funny. It's like extreme different. Wow. Oh, do, you have yeah. fun, do you have any what? fun stories you guys when you're growing up? Do you have any fun stories? Um, just I remember like Christmas, we, uh, my dad was, um, well, I don't know. Are any kids watching this? I don't want to, spoiler alert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my dad was, uh, pretending to be Santa. So he was, what, what happened was he went out front and then the doorbell rang. And when we, oh, and we heard like sleigh bells, we heard sleigh bells and we heard some clunk, 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 clunk. And when the doorbell rang, we opened the door and there was a big present, a big gift. And when we opened the gift, it was a puppy. <laughs> he put a, and so that was a big memory I had that was really fun. And then another fun thing was we got to go to Bermuda when my dad was doing um, the film The Deep. And that was really exciting. It was just fun to get to go to an island. And, and that's where we met Robert Shaw and Sidney Poitier. And it was fun. So you did, you did do the acting for a time as you were growing up, right? I started it right after high school. I did a I did a high school musical, and then I, as soon as I graduated high school, I tried to get an agent, and was doing workshops and theater and you know showcases. And I think, I think it was a couple years, like a year and a half, two years it took to get an agent, and then I started working. Wow. So you, was that, what were your interests before that though? Then what did you do growing up? Ice skating. Um, what else did I like? I loved hanging out with friends. I was very social, you know. Yeah, we were social. So like cheerleading, gymnastics, ice skating, always sports and friends, you know, parties and yeah, movies, going to the movies. Huh? You still have some of those friends and probably some of your friends I up being do. in the industry, right? Uh, from the industry, let me think. Most of my my oldest friends are not in the industry. Um, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah, like I'm wondering. Well, you know what's interesting now that you say that, I'm like, why aren't I friends with like my first love, my first boyfriend? We're friendly, but you know, <laughs> trust was broken. So, yeah. and I'm thinking, I don't know if that's one of the byproducts of growing up in Hollywood. But, um, but my oldest friends, like we've known since we were little bitty girls, we're still friends. Two of my best friends. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Like it's it's really cool that you can uh, have those kind of friendships in LA because I've met I've seen the other side a lot and mm -hmm. to know that there are like it's like Las Vegas too right there's a whole area that people have grown up there and they have family friends there that's kind of cool. Well, one of my best friends moved to Vegas. She's there now. <clears throat> it's funny you said Vegas, and then the other one is in Ojai. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Ojai? It's a little further north of Los Angeles. It's beautiful. It's like an hour and a half north. It's like a little town that's remote and it has a bunch of ranches and a cute little, it's just like this cute little town. It's very wooded, lots of trees. Very cool. I think Kirsten has sung out there and my son went out there for a event, but I pronounce it differently. <laughs> oh. I think calling it OJ. Every like that boulevard that I never say it right. My kids are always laughing at me. Hi, Mary. Is that your friend, Mary, or is it on my? Uh, oh, group is it here? Mary Tupper? I know I'm Mary Tupper. Well, hello, Mary. Hi, Mary. Um, so you were involved in teaching acting after a while like you and Sean Boltz came to observe one of your classes. Uh, how did that come to be? 
Well, uh, I was teaching mostly to Christians because I was I was now in ministry and um, and I just felt like I was supposed to start teaching. Uh, I was praying about it and I was like, what do you want me to do with the gifts and the talents and all the training since the door in Hollywood kind of shut on my acting? And I was asked to co-teach with another um, acting coach. And then we ended up parting ways after a while. And then uh, one of the students came up to me at a, at a women's retreat. She was at this Christian retreat that I was. And she said, why aren't you teaching? I said, well, we kind of, you know, we separated. And she goes, but I want to hear what you have to say. I want to learn. And I said, well, I will teach you. And I, and I said, we just need one other actor so we can do a scene. And she said, okay, I have friends. So we started in my living room in my little studio apartment in Santa Monica, and then it grew. And it was just word of mouth, but it was mostly Christians. And then uh, Sean Bull's sister, Jen Bowles, was in my class and she was my assistant for a while with all the administrative work helping me and praying for me. <laughs> and she said, can I bring my brother? He's, he's from Kansas and he's prophetic and he hangs out with those Kansas city prophets a lot. And, um, he really has a heart for Hollywood and would love to, to come. I said, sure. So he came and he prophesied over the class and, and over me and, and it was really encouraging. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. was way really back when, like that was way back when. Yeah. That was like in 2000, I think 99 or 2000. Wow. So yeah. that's, that's when Sean was first starting out, wasn't it? When he was first. Yeah. He'd been, he's been around the ministry, I think pretty much his whole life. But like, uh, I think there was a season where he was called to kind of, he was staying more insular and then he knew he was going to be launched again and i remember encouraging him you should come to la you should come to la and he said i will i'm going to but it's just not yet and i don't remember what year he came out but yeah. when yeah it wasn't i mean he started e58 not that uh much longer after he came so you've watched him develop more into the man that he is now. Wow, that's huge. And then still walking alongside him, that says a lot for his. He's his. a very kind, very nice man, yeah. And I met his wife, Cherie, just a couple times at E58, and she seems amazing, very down to earth and very sweet. And then uh, I haven't, well, I did meet the kids actually, just one time going to church. Um, so yeah, we don't see each other anymore other than if we see each other at church. Um, and his ministry has grown so much. Like I tried to reach him on uh, his email and I did, you know, it's just, he's gets, I'm sure he gets thousands of messages. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he does, but I'm sure you're special if he was in the place. Always nice. He's like, hey, Sonia, how are you doing? Once I was in the uh, last year in Pasadena, I went to, he was prophesying with his team at an event and I went there and he called out someone who was related to the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash and I I stood up in the auditorium and it, I was pretty far back so I didn't think he recognized me right away but it was my brother's friend was the pilot and so when he called out who's who has a relative that had a relation with that I stood up and then he was like is that you Sonia and I was like yeah he goes oh hey, Sonia how you doing I'm like hey Sean good how are you but he gave a prophetic word for my brother so it was cool yeah. wow it is wow it's, it's you know it's so entertaining there. I just want you to share a little bit about some of the things that you've, I know it's a long story, I'm sure, but some of the things that you've seen through growing up there, oh, you know, yeah. not just being in the church and the prophetic. I mean, God obviously had his hand on your life and we'll talk more about that later, but if you could share a little bit about your view of Hollywood and you know, living there and what's you what mean like the pit of vipers? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, Hollywood is I mean, it's interesting now because there's more and more I think people are becoming aware of the pedophilia, the um Me Too movement. Um there's been a there there was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of, you know, nice good people to, uh, for lack of better word, good people, you know what I mean? They weren't pedophiles and they weren't, you know, abusers, but, but th that stuff did exist. Um, there was definitely what I felt was like, 
I always felt like I was right on the brink, you know, of like major, I was very close to major success several times. And it seemed like something kept like would, would block it or whatever, but I had a lot of favor. But the interesting thing was when I had all that favor, I was still kind of at that point in my life, I was more new age and very open to all these different spiritual things because my dad was killed when I was younger. I had a father, you know, like I was wounded and hurt and I had a little, I think, misunderstanding about who God was. And so it's not that I didn't believe in God. I just was, I was mad at, at God. So I think that opened up some doors for rebellion and curiosity. So it turns out like being in the new age kind of stuff was much more popular in Hollywood. So I think I was more welcomed. Um, but then it, there was a point where I made a decision. I, I got to my knees and I was like, God, I, if you're real, because at that point I'd kind of gone so far away. I wasn't even sure if God was real. I'm like, if you're real, show me you're real. Please prove to me you're real. And if so, I, I want to come back. Like I want love and peace. And I was basically crying out for God and his truth. And, and he just showed up in so many ways. And so the spiritual part was being activated and, and restored and, and really coming back around. But that at the same time, it was like the natural in, in Hollywood, like the doors just shut. I had an agent, um, I had a manager, I had a great team. I was going out regularly on auditions straight to producers. Sometimes I would just get a job offer. I didn't even have to audition. And then, um, so I was I was in it, you know? And then the agent one day was like, okay, we're, we're leaving the agency. Um, I suggest you go find another agent somewhere. I'm like, where? I've been with you guys for nine years. He goes, I don't know, but we're closed, bye. And I'm like, okay, and then, the same time the manager is called and said, yeah, we're folding the management company. We're just going to focus on producing projects. And I'm like, okay. And so all of a sudden I had no representation. And, um, and then also the finances, you know, ran out. I never really made that much money where I could stash a bunch of money aside. I, again, like I was always super close to like getting the big break, but it didn't quite happen. So I, I had to get a day job and I, I ended up working in a doctor's office during the day and I was like, okay, now I'm not, you know, auditioning. I don't have an agent. I don't have a manager. But it was it was that time where God really met me. Mm -hmm. God was showing me like my identity wasn't being an actress, a working actress, or a successful actress. You know, He was peeling off that identity. Well, that must have been like, you know, you were young. That must have been a huge shift for you to experience identity basically yeah. identity crisis right it was and i think a lot of times i think people come into the arts into acting especially or music like because they it's like see me love me you know approve of me i needed that approval because i there were things that happened growing up where I, I didn't get the approval necessarily and after my dad died there was some dysfunction and lack of love for sure um so i was really vulnerable and looking for love and just wanting validation. And I think, um, Hey, Kristen, Kirsten. So, um, yeah, I think that was that needing that validation and love and approval, uh, Hollywood kind of, you know, fit the bill. Cause you're like, you know, when you get the part, you get praise and, you know, when you, when you do good in the part and, and they put your name in for maybe a consideration for an award or, you know, it's just that praise. You just, it was validation. So when I stopped getting that work and I was just now having to go into this office at this doctor's house, I worked in his basement and I was grateful for the steady work, but it was amazing. I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't have to worry about if I gained a pound, I don't have to look perfect. I don't have to be, cause I, I didn't realize how much pressure there was on me, especially in the eighties being a, a girl they were, I mean, some of the things they said, no wonder women had uh, eating disorders left and right, especially, they were like, you have to be skinnier. And I'm like, I'm already starving myself and exercising all the time. And, and I'm not, you know, and they're like, well, we need you just to lose another five pounds. And I was like, okay. So, I mean, it was not healthy, you know? Um, so that pressure of always having to like look better and be on and be performing and, know my lines and and 
you know, just be, be on every time. It was a lot of pressure. So I kind of was relaxed in the doctor's office. Yeah, that's true. Because like even auditions, I've seen young people go for auditions and again and again, and how many in a week? And then you don't even know if you're going to get the part. So there's, oh. there's a whole other environment that is hard to explain. Without exactly. And you put your heart out. Like if you really are, if you, one, if you're talented and, and two, if you're trained, if you have God, especially, but like, and, and good actors have to have some compassion and empathy. I, I really believe that if you're good at your craft, you're, you're going to have some compassion and empathy because you're playing other roles. You have to put yourself in the person's shoes and you put their skin on you, so to speak. And you're, you have to be able to imagine what life is like being in that situation, right? So it takes some imagination too. But when you really put yourself into it and you're literally like bearing your soul, you know, you're like crying and screaming and blah, you know, acting drama and, and you really go into it, then if you don't get the part, you just kind of feel like, okay, I just opened up my soul, you know, and for what, you know, yeah. but it's part of it. You just have to keep doing it. Yeah, it, it like you know, and Pedro, this guy that this is how we met through this course that we we're taking. But he says, like, not to have tough skin, but to have a vulnerable. That was you're, you're like, what that goes totally against what I would think it, in that environment. But it's knowing who you are that makes such a difference, knowing God and knowing who you are. And then not being pressured by all the voices of people around you saying, you know, be skinnier. You're not good enough. You know, like all those lies from Satan. Oh, yeah. You're not pretty enough. You're too pretty. You're not tall enough. You're too tall. You're not blonde and blue eyed. You're not dark enough. You need to be more ethnic. You're too ethnic. You're not the, <laughs> like, yeah. what? You know, it, and it's maddening. And it, it can really, it can, you know, that kind of rejection too. Um, because it's not like I'm selling a phone and if you don't want my phone, then I'm like, okay, on to the next. It sucks because you didn't make a sale, but it's not personal. But when you're the product and you're bearing your heart and your soul and you have to look a certain way and you're walking in and they reject you, it feels very personal. You know, it's not, I've learned, I have much more fun now when I do act or when I do you know, do stuff because now I just look at it as it's sharing a gift, it's sharing a trade, it's sharing a talent. And I just commit and go, look, my job is to be of service to this character, to this role, show up, suit up, do my work. Mm -hmm. And I always try to bring my A game so that I can't feel like, oh, darn it, I wish I did better. I wish I tried something else. I really do my homework. I bring it everything I can so that I just go, okay, I did my part. Now, whether I get it or not, it's completely out of my control. Mm. And there's freedom in that. And you know what? The few, the very few times I've auditioned, because after you hit 30 as a woman, I stopped really getting auditions. And I think it's also because of the spiritual shift that I had, um, that Hollywood has got some darkness in it. So I think the dark didn't like the light in me. Mm. Um, but when I decreased in the number of, um, when I wasn't getting very many interviews or auditions or anything, they came few and far between, but when they did come, as soon as I had that shift where I'm like, look, I'm just going to bring my A game because I want to feel good about my work. Whether they give me the job or not, I have to you know, go to sleep at night and feel like I'm not beating myself up. And when I did that, I started getting almost every job that I auditioned for, which wow. is so cool. Wow. You know, this, you know, this couple that we met through a prayer group, um, Anthony and his wife, they, their daughter got offered a commercial just recently. They're over in the UK and they said they prayed about it and they felt that should be the whole family. And they actually stuck with that. They felt like God wanted the whole family and they prayed. It's such a testimony of God and they, the family got the part. That's, so that, cool. that's not normal. No. That's not, you know, and, and the risk they took of the money that, would be lost in their daughter getting the part versus the whole family because there's three kids and two parents. 
was God said, just trust me, trust me. And it came down to two families and they got it. And understanding that, like what you're saying is you can lay your head on the pillow at night, understanding, hearing from God, which you've been on such a journey of that. And I can't wait till you share more of that um, as we talk further. So how old when your dad passed away? I'm so sorry when he, he was killed, right? Yeah, he was killed. It was a parachute accident, and uh, I was just shy of 15. I was 14. Oh, yeah. so it was nice. a shock because he he was larger than life. I mean, he would go to work all the time. He was wrestling like a python snake in um, Moonraker, uh, the, one of those James Bond films, and he was he doubled for Robert Shaw in Jaws, so he was playing with the shark in Jaws. And then in the deep, he was literally... Um, scuba diving with great white sharks and yeah. one almost went for his head and so you know we he'd come home and say yeah today a great white tried to get me in the head and I just turned around and punched it in the nose and it went away and I'm yeah. like you know and so like he would tell these stories and there was another time he was transferring in an airplane I think it was the great Waldo Pepper from one airplane to another airplane like he had to transfer mid-air and yeah, outside, like hanging on to the that rail thing that, that landed. Oh. And at one point, the parachute that it was on his back started to open while he was in the middle of transferring. So he's like, oh no. So he had to hold the chute down and then hold on to the next thing and then in the middle of the air, like way up and get over. And he said he thought that he was gonna die that day. Then another time he had a really bad accident and hurt his back really badly. It was a, a technical um, malfunction with an airbag that he was doing a high ball and it popped. And then, then, so we, it got to the point where you're like, oh, he is like invincible. You know, that's just what he does. He always comes back. So when we, when we heard that he was killed, I, I was in such shock. I'm like, no, I remember just, no, mm -mm, I cannot, not can't, I can't receive that. <laughs> it was, it was hard to receive that. Wow, and so young, like, I'm sorry, like, I know it's been a journey to go through. Yeah. I mean, you probably didn't deal with, you know, that until you got a little bit older. Totally. Like, through it, because you're so young. And it was survival mode. I had to, um, because I was the oldest of my siblings, and my mom was hit so hard. Oh, yeah. That she just kind of imploded, and was like passed out in the back bedroom with depression. And um, she started drinking, you know, just to comfort herself, I think just to numb out. She was just in shock and in so much pain. And so I was the one who was like, we're gonna soldier on. That's what dad would have wanted, you know? And I was always like my dad, like, yeah. so I thought, what would dad do? He would, yeah. he would make sure we're all doing our chores and doing our homework. And, you know, so I kind of tried to be the parent, which by the way, doesn't go very well with siblings, just in <laughs> case you don't try it. No, but it, there was not really another option, <laughs> you know, because it was like, it was me. I was the oldest. My brother was 12. My sister was 10. And, you know, we, my, my, my grandma lived in um, Denmark. We didn't have, the grandpas were already gone. My gra other grandma was, um, she passed in 99, but she was in Massachusetts. We didn't have anybody else. We didn't have any uncles or aunts living in the state with us. So it was just like, somebody had to do it. Wow. So you grew up overnight. I did. Yeah. I did. Wow. wow. And did you get now to transition to? you married how old were you when you met um, i was older <laughs> it took me a while i once i was you know christian and born again yeah. um i was in the church i'd say almost nine years before i i and i was engaged twice before i met my husband and i kept praying because i wanted to be married i wanted to settle down i wanted to have children but, and I knew that I needed an equal yoke and I knew that I had tried to stay pure until marriage. You know, I hadn't been in the past. I grew up in Hollywood. That's not what you do in Hollywood. So, but I made that decision and I, and I was sticking to it. And when I, um, I mean, some people can do that in Hollywood. That wasn't my experience the way I grew up. But um, so we, we met and I was praying and I was like, God, I just want to make sure it's the right one that you, you know, that you are in it, that this is the man you have for me. And 
And I said, I don't care if like 40 prophets come up and say, this is the man. I need you to confirm it to me personally. So I know that I know that I know. And he did. And there were so many, there was a, it's a beautiful story. It's a very long story. So I'll keep it short, but we met on Valentine's day. We were both going to serve a, a couple who were planting a church out in the Atwater village. And the Lord, I, I had two other events to go to that day, single events on Valentine's day. But I heard the Lord say, I want you to go to Atwater and serve the man and woman of God. They, I want you to go pray for them because they're starting the ministry. I was like, okay. So I did. And my ex-husband had been, he got that uh, directive from the Lord that morning, bring your guitar. I want you to go. And he was giving somebody a ride like to work or he was picking them up. And then he said, you know, but I really feel like I need to go to this service. So when we walked in that night, we saw each other and we started talking. And then the pastor who knew us both, he was like, you guys don't know each other? And we're like, no, I don't think so. He goes, well, I've been working with both of you guys all the time. I thought you knew each other. And um, so then he was like, you should talk to him about your entertainment career. And I'm like, you're in, in the entertainment career? Because here was my cry too. I was, I was like, God, you called me to Hollywood and you called me to ministry. Those two don't mix, <laughs> who, especially 20 years ago. I'm like, who is going to understand? What kind of husband is going to get it? I get, I get, if you're a pastor or a five-fold ministry, you're a minister. If you're in Hollywood, you're in Hollywood. They don't mix. So like what man is going to understand? So here I'm at this ministry event, you know, like totally prophetic, spiritual people. And here's this young man and he's saying, talk to him about Hollywood. I'm like, you work in Hollywood? He goes, yeah. And he was raised in Hollywood too, um, working since he was like 13. So we just started, we had so much in common. And then they were like, hey, could you guys lead worship tonight? So we led worship together. I sang. He played guitar because the Lord told him to bring the guitar. Mm -hmm. and we didn't know that they weren't going to have their worship leaders show up. So, But because we were ready, we did. And then that night, like they were like, oh, my gosh, you too. Like they, they saw it. And then um, an apostle that I was serving, or well, actually uh, the apostle was where my husband was serving first. And then I visited the church, and there was just so many confirmations, and God just like lined it up and, and we were married within five months of Whoa. Whoa. many confirmations. And God totally answered my prayer where, where not only did other people confirm it, but he confirmed it very particularly to me about in several ways so that I knew that I knew that I knew. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was kind of cool. Sadly, it didn't work out. <laughs> so do you want to share about that? Like any <clears throat> journey there? Um, yeah, I'll share. Um, I think that was one of the hardest things I went through in, in addition to losing my dad was the marriage ending because uh, you know that scripture that there's blessings for obedience. And, um, and that's true. But what was so hard is that like my understanding of what the blessing would look like, you know, I thought for sure, well, I married a man of God. God told me to marry him. We married through church. You know, God brought us together. It was confirmed, confirmed, confirmed for both of us. This will never be a divorce. You know, we'll never have, because we don't do that. Believers don't do that. But what happened was, um, you know, through some choices he made, and he was working 80 hours a week in Hollywood. He ended up going back to Hollywood. When we were, when we met, he was taking a, um, a hiatus, and he was just wanting to serve in ministry. And that's kind of where God had me too, because of the stripping away, you know, and, and just now I was working very part-time teaching acting and doing a couple little part-time jobs, but mostly my focus was on ministry. I was praying in the word, doing Bible studies, doing home groups, having like Holy Ghost mm -hmm. parties at church, you know, and in home groups. So I didn't, that was my focus too. So I was like, okay. But then when he said, you know, I need to start providing for a family, if we're getting married, he, he looked at the scripture that said a man who doesn't provide for the family is worse than a heathen. He said, I got to go back to work. The apostle who we were serving under had told us he planned on putting us on staff as pastors as soon as they got the money to do that, but that didn't happen. So my ex took a job back in Hollywood and then it was like, um, literally never saw him. I, I hardly ever saw him. I mean, he would leave 
at 4.45 in the morning to drive to be at work by 5.30 because we moved to a little tiny house out in Whittier to save money and it was closer to the church out there. And he um, would not be home until 12. And then when he got home at midnight, and that was nonstop work. He would have to type call sheets for another hour or two. Then he'd crash and have to wake up in two or three more hours. Some, I mean, he got about four hours of sleep a night. We we didn't eat dinner together. We didn't, you know, we didn't get to chat about our day like normal couples. You know, hey, honey, how would you? How was work? What? We just only saw each other for about a day on the weekend. And then, you know, he was back to, he'd sleep in half a day because he was so exhausted. And then he'd have to do a little, you know, his personal things. And then we would, we'd have one day a week. And then, um, so that was a grind. And uh, I think between the physical grind and the exhaustion, and then also him not being able to stay girded up in the spirit. Um, the spiritual environment in Hollywood is very dark. And I remember seeing him struggling with it. And I was praying for him, probably could have prayed more, probably should have prayed more. But um, because God had also told me that I was also, also had a call in Hollywood. I was also trying to relaunch my acting career with his blessing. The Lord spoke to me in 2004, in December, we were in Hawaii. And I saw a vision, right? I was looking at the waves and the surfers and God said, um, do you know that acting is like surfing? And I was like, how so, Lord? He said, well, do you see how sometimes you have to wait for the wave, like the surfers are waiting out there? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, sometimes you have to wait in between jobs. I'm like, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And then he says, but you know the only way that you're going to catch a wave? And I said, what's that? He goes, you have to stay in the water. And I'm like, oh, right. So, and well, I and I, uh, so my husband, I told my husband, the Lord and I just had this conversation. This is what I heard. And he goes, well, then you got to get back in the, he goes, are you in the water? I said, well, I'm walking along the edge of the water. I said, I'm, I feel like my feet are in the water and I'm at the edge, but it's just shallow water. He goes, well, then you got to get back in. And I said, you sure? He goes, yeah. So he goes, get back into acting class, get your head shots, you know? So I, I withdrew from um, university because I was trying to get my degree thinking we would homeschool kids and to try to open up some other form of, you know, income for me to help serve. And um, <clears throat> so I just said, okay, I'm going full force back into Hollywood. So that was January, 2005. Wow. With his blessing. Yeah. And then I think within a couple of years of trying to, again, it, it was like, there was a wall I couldn't get through. And it was like, I remember once a, a, a teacher referred me to an agent because you need an agent to get you out. And she's like, you're so talented. You've got so much experience. I'm going to refer you. She was really sweet. I walk in and this person is like, why are you here? And I'm like, I'm here because I was told to come here to drop off my picture. No, you should call first. I'm like, oh, okay. I had an appointment. Literally like manifesting. Like there was a demon. She, would, she hated me. <laughs> and I'm like, I just walked in here. Wow. You don't have a history. But then it dawned on me. I'm like, oh. Oh, the, the Jesus in me, the, the, the spirit in me, whatever is in her does not like the spirit in me. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. It does. And in Hollywood, especially you, it's a very, um, a lot of people get involved in witchcraft who are there. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and a lot of times I think they're innocently getting involved. They don't realize a lot of times what you're opening yourself up to. So I think they start with these entry level, you know, go and get your palm in and oh, I'm going to do a Ouija board at the party and we're going to have, you know, this lady, this psychic come and, you know, we're going to, you know, and they just, it's kind of like this fun and game and cool and it's yeah. spiritual. So people get into that, but you know, as you know, people, when you open up your spirit to certain things, the devil's like, he just looks for an inch. If you give him an inch, he'll shove his whole, you know, leg through and try to get in. I, I felt it there too. And I saw like, a, I kept seeing in the spirit, a wall, like for Christians, you know? Yeah. It's a wall, but it looks like it's, it's plastic. Like, so you can't always see it. And then like, there's this little hole, you know? And if you can try and get through that hole, but I feel like when we look to God, and there's people in Hollywood that have been praying for many, many years. Mm -hmm. but to God, then God opens the, the <clears throat> to let you in and he's leading you to the right. And I think many times 
he's protecting us with that wall as well. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's an actual protection. But mm-hmm. there there are people. It is rare to find people that stay true to walking in intimacy with God and get to a high level because to the world we know when you're there in Hollywood you know behind the scenes so what looks and appears to be all spiritual and up front and you think that they have their life all together when you start to you know unpack and look behind the scenes there's there's a lot of mess and so a lot of people that are representing the Christian you know I don't believe there's Christian the secular I believe we you know our family believes that we just are you know, walking with Jesus, whatever we do, whether it's in, you know, with the world or with Mm -hmm. the church, it's to transform lives, to impact lives. And so I believe you're, Mm -hmm. I believe that you have the same heart on you. Wow. What, uh, like, you're just telling us a glimpse of your story, Sonia, and what you've been through. Mm -hmm. I just admire you knowing Mm -hmm. uh, the heart you have for God and what you, you know, committed to, and how many lives you are impacting and like speaking into and praying over you you've ministered to me already and tears you know it's not tears um so i just honor you in that because i mean we're only getting a glimpse of you tonight um but i know that you're like a force to be reckoned with in the you know in the spiritual realm because you really love seeing god move I do. Yes, and I and I picked that up from you. So I wanted to I want to go into this part. You've had a deep heart for ministry since a young age, I believe. Mm-hmm. Tell us about when you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What happened that night? How did your life change? Oh my gosh, it was so cool. So I was hanging out with this family that God put me with. They were friends with Lonnie Frisbee, who was part of the Jesus movement in California in the 70s. Now, Lonnie had already passed, but they kept talking to me about Lonnie Frisbee, Lonnie Frisbee, and how wild he was. And they were very prophetic. And the mama was like a total prayer warrior. And she would, she, I was new to the gifts of the spirit. And so she was just like pouring into me and praying for me a lot. And like, I would say a word and she would confirm it. And she goes, yep, you're a mouthpiece for the Lord. Now, I didn't know what that meant. But one night they had a party, like not a party. Um, it was a Holy Ghost party. It was like a Bible study. <laughs> and it was in their little living room. And the peace of God was in this home because it was so sanctified. It was this little bungalow in Santa Monica that had been stripped of anything. They just cleaned it out. It was like a little slice of heaven. The only things in that house were already anointed and dedicated and sanctified for the Lord. So we were in there and the love of God was flowing and the power of God. I just remember sitting on the floor cross legged, and all of a sudden I felt a hand on my back. I felt a hand come on my back and I thought somebody was walking around praying and putting their hand on my back. When I opened my eye, I didn't see anybody there. But what happened was I started to like rock and sway. Like, you know how flames go like this? Mm-hmm. Flames. Um, I was shaking like that. And it was like, it was like I had been activated. Like power was deposited in me. And I started shaking supernaturally. And it wasn't scary. It wasn't freaky. It wasn't new agey. I had total peace. But I knew that I had like a spiritual encounter. And then um, I got slain in the spirit. Like the weightiness of God, just like I, I leaned back and back and back. I was being, I felt like I was being pushed back, and I laid down on the ground. Now this is a supernatural, weird thing. I haven't told this many, this story many times, but while I was down on the ground, like pinned down, it wasn't scary. One arm went out, and then the other arm went out, and it was like being crucified, but without the pain, obviously. But I was. I was laid out like that, like I'd been on a cross. Wow. And it was so supernatural. And, and I just was like, whoa. And I didn't really realize what that was. Now I think that was being baptized in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, then at Malibu Vineyard, when I, I used to go there, they had a night where they were uh, praying for impartation of the spiritual gifts. And so I went to every single line. I'm like, free gifts in the spirit. Why not? I'm going to ask for them all. So 
I'm like, so I did, I asked for tongues, interpretations of tongues, prophecy, gifts of knowledge, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. Um, I asked for the gift to worship more, like the worship anointing. Um, Jason Wade laid hands on me. He used to, he's the lead singer of uh, Lifehouse. Um, it was just like, I got, I just asked for every gift. And, um, you know, I just had been so blessed because I've had so many amazing people like God was reminding me last year, all the people that he put in my life or put me in their life and, and like the laying on of hands, the prayer, the teaching, the walking in the spirit with power, signs and wonders. I went to the Azusa house. Um, somebody said, oh, there's a guy there, an apostle, and he's doing deliverance. And I was like, okay, I'll go. So I drove out there. It was in the Azusa house. I don't remember the apostle's name. I felt horrible. He was uh, from Latin America. And he just started praying for me, got laid out in the spirit. He prophesied over me, broke some stuff off. I don't even remember it all, but he did some deep healing deliverance. And then I stood up and he's like, I'm going to pray for you again. And I'm like, okay. So then he prayed and he asked for the apostolic mantle to, to put come on to me. And the power and the weightiness of this mantle, like I literally started, I mean, I hope your people on here, I don't know if they're going to feel, you know, this is crazy, <laughs> but it was amazing. Again, it was one of those supernatural things. It was like the, the, it felt like a huge cloak. Like if you can imagine a thousand pound velvet cloak wow. and it was, it was put on me and I literally started like shaking under the power of God and I crumpled down to the floor where I couldn't get up. Again, not scary, totally peaceful, total joy. You're in awe. I was just in awe at the power of God and the excitement of whatever he was doing supernaturally, you know? So he's given me like road posts, signposts that he reminded me of. Do you remember this? I deposited that. Do you remember this? I was giving you that. Do you remember this? I was giving you that. I'm like, oh. And then, because last year, he's like, I'm launching you in full-time ministry now. And, and if several people had given me prophetic words about it, so I'm like, okay, confirmation. But, you know, some, and then I started to realize, I'm like, I forgot about all that stuff. <laughs> like, I'm like, you, no wonder. Of course you are, because you've put so much in me. I've got to share, I've got to give it. And, you know, like he's been doing this preparation for like 30 years. Isn't that always the way it is, is that, as you look back, when you come into a place like this, this is what God created me to do in yes. my life. And it's like what I've been preparing all through, but you didn't even know. As a, even as a little girl, if you look back, there's probably stories of where you can I pray for you? Or you know, like totally. No, <laughs> it's a total prayer. I was praying as a little girl. And then one time, I'll tell you this too, because it's really cool. I was like nine or ten. I went to my neighbor's house and I said, I had a dream. No, no, I wasn't a dream. I said, I heard a loud voice say my name. He said, Sonia. And I was like, <laughs> "Where? who is that? And I heard it again three times. Wow. And she goes, oh, that's interesting. That's like Samuel in the Bible. Okay, again, I forgot that. Wow. But that's, you know, God has, he called me from a young age. I just raised my question but I know what one of them is. <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't know where it went, but um, sometimes when you shake your phone, it'll come back. Uh, come back. So it did come back. Okay, good. See, I shook my phone. Um, when you were the youth pastor walking with Al Hornis and experiencing signs, powers, and wonders, do you have some a story to tell us of what happened then? Yeah, that was awesome. That was with my, my ex-husband too. Um, well, I'll tell you this. Okay, so one of the things that I kept getting attacked with um, was car accidents. I kept have getting rear-ended and I've, I almost, I had a really bad head injury when I was 10, gymnastics injury could have taken me out and then I got rear-ended five times. So when I went up before um, Apostle the first time, he looks at me and he gets that fiery, you know, like that, that power and he said, I break off a spirit of catastrophe off your life in the name of Jesus. And, and I flew back in the spirit. Like I fell back. I mean, people would go flying. He would blow and chairs and people would go like across the room. I mean, it was supernatural again, power. And, and ever since then, 
no more car accidents. And I really no. knew I'm, I'm like that broke because it felt like it was a curse. There was something I'm like, why does this keep happening? So he broke that off, which was, I was really power. That was powerful. I was so grateful. And then when we got to be youth pastors, we would, we had like a mass deliverance one night where we were praying for all the kids for deliverance and kids were, they were vomiting and they were, they were like coughing things out and we were being, you know, we had a bucket and they were going around and they were really receptive. They were wonderful. And, um, a lot of times like my ex-husband would be across the room and I'd be over here and we were ministering to children. They were in their early teens to high school. And one of them said, Oh my, a few of them would say, Pastor Sonia, Pastor Jeremiah just told me that same thing. And I was like, confirmation, you know, so we were flowing in the spirit and it, it was pretty cool. Um, what else about that church? Can I tell you, there was another time when we were first together and um, the apostle, we were both, it was worship time in church and we were both kind of flowing in the spirit the same way. And we didn't realize that we were kind of doing the same movement at the same exact time, part of those confirmations. And the apostle looked over at us and he goes, Sonia, Jeremiah, he goes, look at you guys in the spirit, how you guys are in sync. And we look at each other and we start laughing because we were doing the exact same thing without realizing it. And then he goes, come up here. And so he prophesied over us and he just said, so Sonia, what did you do before getting in ministry? And I said, I worked in the entertainment industry. Because Jeremiah, what did you do before getting in ministry? Work in the entertainment industry. And where, how are you serving in ministry? Youth pastor. And how were you serving in ministry? Youth pastor, because I was an assistant youth pastor at Malibu Vineyard before this. I said, I see. And he, and he just like, he basically just put it out and he said, the Lord has brought you two together for a work for such a time as this. He's having you enter in ministry together. And he, we got laid out in the spirit and we would just laugh. You know, we, the, it was just the joy of the Lord, you know, rolling around on the floor. We rolled around in the parking lot on concrete under the, anointing. it was so fun. I didn't care if I'm getting dirty. You don't care when you're in the spirit, you know? And you know, there's that, when, I, when in that time, because I was back then, I was raised in the Baptist church. Oh, <laughs> and so I thought that was heathens over there. Oh, you know? crazy time. But just knowing as I've walked through healing and just experiencing God's love and experiencing the joy of God, yeah, Mary is saying, Mary Lopez saying, rolling around on the floor. <laughs> and being able to laugh in the spirit, my sister, I have a sister, she's not on right now because I think they're having her mother-in-law's birthday party, Stephanie, but she's been dragged out of big events because she's just, she just gets hit. Like she just <laughs> she carries that like joy and there's such a release, but you know, she gets downloads of visions and prophetic words. Like one time when we were in Hollywood, she got this huge download that God's still showing me the unraveling of it you know and it's pretty it's i'll have to share it with you sonia because it it's that deep but i love i love that you came through growing up in hollywood being in hollywood through your father experience of great losses mm. and being in hollywood yourself in the entertainment industry and being connected for god to step you into full-time ministry, apostolic ministry, like that is such a testimony, Sonia, of what God can do in mm -hmm. someone's life. Like mm -hmm. it's such an inspiration. And I know we only touch on pieces of even that part of your journey. I had this one more question here. Let's talk about what you love doing right now. <laughs> um, you've been involved in a lot of prayer groups as mm -hmm. well as a leader for those groups. Mm -hmm. What motivates, there's a few questions in one. What motivates you in this season? What's on your heart? What is God showing you in your life now? Mm -hmm. Do you have any aspirations for this coming year you'd like to share? So any part of that, that God, hi, Mary. Mm -hmm. Any part of that, that God has put on for you to, uh, share, go right ahead. Yeah. Um, well, definitely. I mean, I love ministering to women. I mean, all, all people, but, but he's really given me a heart for women. And like this weekend, we, a group of us drove together and we went out to get worship live worship because our governor shut it down and our church is still closed. So we went to, um, drove out to the desert and we went to a church service where Sean Foyt, 
who you yeah. were for yeah. Congress. He's with Bethel Reading Church. He was leading worship. We showed up, and afterwards, um, one of the, we started praying for each other. This lady Kate laid hands on me, and I went to the ground and the, under the anointing, and then. And then another girl, Jacqueline, I prayed for her. And then she was going to the ground. And then Sherilyn came over. And then she gave a prophetic word that just broke something. And then so we were just flowing in the spirit. And it was so powerful. And there was deliverance and there was healing and there was joy. And then and it was like amazing, you know. And then we went out to lunch. And then I got to pray um, because we carpooled. And when we came back, somebody said, Hey, can we? Can we go a little deeper in prayer? I felt like God was breaking something off. And I'm like, that's how I felt. Like it didn't feel done but because we were guests in their church. And they were kind of like looking at us like, who are you guys? And why are you guys breaking it, you know, breaking things up in the spirit over here? And we're like, okay, we're going. And so so it wasn't finished. The Holy Spirit wanted to do more work and she discerned it. And I was so honored that she asked me, will you, can I, can you pray with me more? I feel like I, I was like, of course. And it was like a powerful healing, deep time of prayer. So I got to say, I think that's where my heart is. I mean, it just, there's such a joy, you know, in, in walking in the spirit with like-minded people, with especially these powerful anointed women of God. And, um, and then when I have home groups, like, that's my thing. I just want to have the Holy Spirit party like holy spirit ministry you know where people read each other's mail and pray and break things off and encourage and you know discern and it's just i love it that's my favorite thing and then politically because i was a poli sci major at ucla when i was back and forth between getting called back to hollywood and then having that wall where i couldn't I wasn't getting work, so I decided to go finish my degree at UCLA. So I finished, I became a poli sci major, and I really had a heart for that, but at the time it was so dark, and it, there's still a lot of darkness, kind of similar to Hollywood, but the Lord gave a word a couple years ago at the home group here about changing of the guard, and I believe it's both for Hollywood and for politicians and government, and I've been given a few words about that as well, that God's gonna bring me into a government position. So um, I'm helping out with a Congress person who's running out here. He's running against uh, Adam Schiff who, Schiff, who I am very much in favor of anybody with more godly values being in office. So I'm going to start volunteering. And one of the ladies that's overseeing the, the uh, volunteers for his uh, team, is on the Bethel Reading prayer team. So oh, there's spiritual wow. people around that I just got connected and I feel God all over it. And then we'll see if God ends up. Oh, and then a group of us went and prayed around the mayor's house in Los <laughs> Angeles last weekend. We're going to go downtown and pray for the police this weekend. So like, I feel this governmental call as well. Wow. Yeah. My friend, she just came on here and she's got a governmental call for, she has such a passion. She says, go girl. She has been in Hollywood and also uh, has such a passion for um, young people stepping in to vote and know what's going on. So she's constantly like reaching out to the kids. Like, are you, are you paying attention to this? You're listening to this. So she really loves what you, <laughs> what you're talking about. Yay, you go girl too. Yeah, and you know, the church, I think for a long time was, we got it wrong. We were told, oh, there's separation of church and state. You stay out of politics. It's kind of like how they say, you stay out of Hollywood. Hollywood's a dirty, filthy cesspool. We don't want Chris, we can't have a Christian in Hollywood. A lot of people used to kind of say that and act that way. And I'm, and it didn't make sense. Cause I'm like, but we're supposed to bring light into the darkness. We're supposed, how is it ever going to get light if the if the light stays out? then it's going to stay dark. So I always understood that we had to go in. I just didn't really realize how much warfare there was. And I, you know, um, and I think it has to be a corporate thing, which is what we're experiencing now, you know, and now I think the body of Christ is realizing, oh, we do need to vote. We do need to pray and we do need to be active because if we, if we don't get in there, then the enemy is going to send his people in to take over, you know? So, and that's, I believe, what has happened in several places. So you, you were still on talking and you guys could hear her and I was totally out. 
<laughs> well, there were two of you all of a sudden. It was like a year shut off and then you came back I, in. I don't know why there's two of me. Yeah, like so funny. But praise God that others can hear you. The Judy's saying on the seven mount of culture, it's time. Amen. And that's why we said, Sonia, like it never seems like enough time to have these interviews. And you know, it it's pushing out of our comfort zone to do this, but people need to hear. People need to hear what people are doing and being encouraged. Like I was on a prayer call. And they're talking about revival. DC Capital was on there. She's talking about revival versus transformation. Revival doesn't change a city or a neighborhood or a nation. Transformation does. And if we can sit down with leaders, like she said, she was more excited about 30 leaders coming together in Brazil than the 10,000 or whatever that showed up at an event because those leaders were involved in making an impact and change with finances, with positioning and roles. And that's what I love about you, Judy, too. You share that and, and such a passion um, to encourage us because many of us, we just aren't educated. Like we, we just don't know this stuff. I mean, we should. And then we listen to what the um, news is telling us mm -hmm. and oh. it's not giving us accurate information so right. i'm very thankful for people like you sonia for people like judy for other people in my life who update me and i can trust and then you're talking to the people involved in the middle of those relationships and and so then i can be more aware and know how to pray so I'm I'm here for that. thank you i just want to say real quick something the lord has been showing me recently is I really feel like he's wanting us to understand the authority he's given us. Like it's so much authority because he ha he's king of kings, lord of lords. He had authority over everything, right? Every spirit has to bow to the name of Jesus. Now he he died, he gave resurrection, right? Resurrection power, got the keys back from the devil in hell, got the keys back to life and death resurrected to the father and he has given us his authority and mm -hmm. you know the, and but i mean i may i sound like i'm preaching but it's like it's i've heard it but when you really wrap your head around it and go oh my gosh that's why when he said greater things will you do for those who believe we will heal the sick we will raise the dead we will cast out demons it's like we will pick up serpents you know that's what we can do anything in the name of Jesus. We can do all things. Jesus walked on water with with faith and with understanding who we are in him and understanding the authority he's given us. So like I'm so passionate about that and about imparting and encouraging and training, equipping, teaching because an army, when we link arms and we all realize the authority we have and we know how to pray we know how to decree we know how to speak life rather than death because power of life and death is in the tongue and we know how to take our thought authority the devil will flee we, we will not have he's trying to um get these strongholds all over but the oh yay confirmation it's her dev devotional verse this morning so it's like you know he we have authority and i think a lot of christians and especially because in the media like the movie the exorcist made the devil look so big bad and scary the poor girl was spinning around spitting out peace your green pea soup right and the, and that pray that priest with the cross couldn't was powerless against the devil you know that's the mm -hmm. kind of stuff the messages that we've been given and yeah. the truth is all we have to say is in the name of jesus go get out mm -hmm. and it has to go that's we have that authority in him and and like to come over fear to take take authority over fear when we know that then we're going to walk in boldness wow. and the atmosphere is going to change wow. and we will take ground for the kingdom but more people are needed like what you're sharing um to like look at Katie saying here, this is all new to me. Yet so totally exciting. So I never knew about Holy Spirit until about 40 years old. Like it was like, uh, they talk about that, but they speak over those verses in, in the church that I grew up in. And I didn't understand the life of God. 
I didn't understand. And Jesus is my friend. God's way over there in the sky. And, you know, he, he's got a gavel in his hand. This is what we actually are programmed. Right. Programmed to believe. And as God has been healing me, opening my eyes, you know, breaking off uh, blinders. Literally, you know, it says the gods, the little g gods of this world have blinded the eyes. Mm -hmm. And because sin doesn't want us to know who we are. (laughs) He's driven by us walking in worship and glory. And so it's exciting that you're sharing this because you're bringing truth that can say, hey, look, who does God say that you are? Mm-hmm. Who do you see you as? And, you know, it's not like, it's, it's, it's a revelation. It's not just teaching. It's a revelation. So thank you, Father God, for Sonia mm-hmm. and the revelation that you've given her. I pray that it's released tonight through mm-hmm. her, Father God, to what, as we go through prayer time, God, that whatever you put upon her the anointing to release god i just thank you god to bless it right now father holy spirit come thank you Mm. thank you jesus thank you lord yes and uh the other thing that i was just hearing and remembering is to whom much is given much is required so it's not like oh give it to me i want the power of god i just want to be powerful yay it's like there's a cost Um, And it's not that we're paying, I mean, Jesus paid the cost, but to walk with that authority, there's a, again, that weightiness and there's a responsibility, you know, what we speak, how we act. And it's not, and I want to stay away from like religious teaching that's like, oh, if you're, if you're sin, you're going to get, you know, spanking. (laughs) It's like, sometimes, yes, God does discipline those he loves, but more so it's like when we open the door the devil comes and attacks. He gets access because he's a legalist. So you want to make sure you repent, you're repentant, you're walking. You know, there's a sanctification period and a process, I think, that God calls people to when he's going to give them that kind of apostolic call and anointing. There's a sanctification, a stripping, dying to self. Um, so I'll just pray because he's the one who, who deposits and he knows who's ready and who's not. You know, he's the one who knows and he sees hearts. And But the cool thing, too, about the anointing, because the anointing breaks the yoke. Sometimes we need that dousing in the spirit to break things off. And then we're able to walk a more victorious life. Like, it, And it's not about perfection. It's not. It's not about perfection. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to say uh, you need to see people's names. Make sure to go on your phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if there's if I need to pray for anyone, let me turn down the volume so I don't hear an Fine. echo. And it's not about okay. So, Mary Lopez, Kitty Walker, does anybody want prayer? I just see their comments. Let me see. Are you saying that I'll see their names somewhere else? Shown, but uh, I you can see their names there. But then you can, if God gives you to lead you to pray for anyone. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I have heard that a couple of times recently where much is given, much is required. Amen. So that's confirmation. You're here for a reason. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you that you brought the women here, the people here. They may not just be women that are hungry for more of you. They're thirsty for more of you. And you're drawing them by your spirit, God. I thank you. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, you to give a heavenly deposit today of more of your fire, more of your love, more of your power in Jesus' name. Mm. I pray for Holy Spirit baptism by fire in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Because the fire... You know, so, so cool about fire. It's purifying, like the refiner's fire. And the fire was what drove the serpent out, the viper out of the sticks when the apostle Paul, you know, he got bit. But the anointing and the power that he walked in, he just shook that viper in the fire and there were no ill effects. Wow. So, Lord, I thank you that if anybody has, uh, if there's ever been an attempt for like a viper bite, if anybody is suffering from anything 
um, spiritually or physically right now, God, in the name of Jesus. I just thank you that we can shake it off into the fire, shake off the results of that bite in the fire, whether it's an emotional bite, a physical bite, a spiritual bite, or even a mental bite, God, where, where our thoughts, where our mind needs to be renewed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your purifying fire, the refiner's fire. I feel hot. It could be menopause. It could be the fire of God. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, Lord, I just thank you. No, it feels like the fire. God, I thank you for your fire. God, bless Mary Lopez. God, bless her. God, and Jen MTZ. Yes, shake it off. Shake it off. Shake off any any serpents or anything that have tried to attach any lying devils, any uh, devils of witchcraft or sorcery that have tried to attach themselves. We command you to go off into the fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mary Tupper, bless you. She's awesome, fiery woman of God too. Hallelujah. You got to have Mary on one of these days. Mary Tupper, God is, she's like prophetic, prayer warrior, minister, does deliverance ministry. Thank wow. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Christine. Hi, Christine. You look familiar. I think I've seen you around. I think we're Facebook friends. I remember your Facebook page, your profile. Fire, God, fire, God, fire, God. Not just you, my whole chest is hot. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for the fire. God, thank you. I just know that you're doing something supernaturally right now in faith. Hallelujah, God, you're burning up chaff. You're burning up wounds, old wounds. You're pushing them up and out to the surface to be healed and dealt with. In Jesus' name, any serpent. I keep seeing that like serpents being driven out, just like that fire with Paul, with the serpent coming out. And, um, you know, serpents are just demonic. I love you too, Mary. Serpents are just whatever the evil one is trying to get to us. Sometimes I think it's generational. Sometimes we accidentally, like, hey, I was I was angry today working on something, <laughs> and I, I didn't have the most pure language. I'm just being real. I, I am being, I am being made new all the time. We have flesh. You know, it's like we do have flesh and we, it, the apostle Paul said, I do what I don't want to do and I don't do what I want to do. And he was constantly boxing. You know? Sometimes we wrestle with our flesh. We get in the flesh. So Lord, I thank you. I repent from my flesh in Jesus name, but I thank you for the fire. Please pray for clarity to where I am being led, who I am to serve, how through music and worship. Thank you. Katie. Katie. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you for the anointing for worship. And you know what I'm seeing right now for you, Katie, is like, remember when King David would worship and it would bring peace to Saul? Saul was like tormented by demonic spirits. And David's music, his worship was like a form of deliverance for Saul. So I see that when you play, I see God giving you an anointing for bringing um, healing and for deliverance in Jesus' name. Lord, I just ask you to impart right now this fire into her music, this, this healing deliverance ministry fire into her music, God, in Jesus' name. That when people are in, under the anointing, there will be weeping, there will be healing of hearts, and there will be deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This one's a lot to read. <laughs> For the dominion of Canada, the Canadians would humble themselves and pray and repent. Ask God to heal our land, broken families, broken hearts, ungodly legislation that is ripping this nation apart. Pray that God will raise up a godly, common sense leader for this nation. Thank you for Derek Sloan and Dr. Leslin Lewis, who are courageously willing to stand for life and faith and freedom in the family. Raise up common sense dads and men to stand on guard for our families. Amen. I agree with that in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I ask for that for, for Canada and the U.S. God, that's been a prayer on my heart as well. Raise up godly men. Raise up the, the, the family unit, the fathers to stay in the family, to, to take their rightful position. Because, you know, the fatherlessness has brought such a curse on the land. It's brought so many hardships, you know, like I went through poverty. My mom was 
you know, struggling with addiction and, and women, we, it's like single moms. It, it's just, it's so stressful. And Lord, I agree. Thank you for those people that you named that are godly, that are standing up. We ask God that you would give them like a, a spine of steel, that they would be so strong in you, God. Just like kind of, I mean, President Trump has a strength. He's got like a forehead that's like very, like things just fly off, right? He doesn't get annoyed or bothered by, it doesn't seem like anything bothers him really. He's got a toughness, got a, a toughness that these people will have resiliency and toughness that they will come up against evil and not back down in the name of Jesus, that they will know their authority. If they don't yet know what I pray, they come into an understanding that they come into true relationship with you, Jesus, and that they recognize the gifts and the talents and the authority that you have given them and that they would, they would uh, wield the sword of the spirit for, for judgment wisely in Jesus name. We ask for wise leaders for the justice because your word says that leaders have the power to bring justice, right? They, they have the rod of justice. So we want godly leaders who will execute godly justice in our nation, in the nation of Canada. And Lord, we just thank you, God, for, yes, repentance for both of our nations, God, that this is a season to repent, to get right with the Lord. And to repent doesn't just mean to say, I'm sorry. It means we turn, we change direction. So God, I pray that that the leaders in our nations would repent, change direction when they're not serving you, God, and they're not serving the people because they don't have the right heart. God, I pray you they'd repent. And if they do not repent, I pray in the name of Jesus, you do a changing of the guard because that's the word he gave me. Whether their hearts are changed or whether you replace them with godly, righteous, and again, no person is totally righteous other than the righteousness of Christ, but with a heart to stand for you and your people, for righteous values, for family, to come against the, um, the, the, the attack on our faith the attack on freedom. Yes, Lord, I agree. I agree. We we stand, God, united in Jesus' name, agreeing. And you said where two or more agree, it will be done. If we pray for anything according to your will, it will be done. And Lord, you said a, a two can set a thousand to flight. Or what is it? One can set a thousand to flight. Two can set tens of thousands to flight. So how many can 10 of us set? To flight yeah. a million, so we, million. So, yeah, millions millions we a billion so we come against all yeah. oh, every single demonic assignment in jesus name every single assignment right now high up in government god we thank you for dismantling that in jesus name we speak confusion on the enemy's camp we thank you for raising up leaders god we thank you that men and women are coming to their knees realizing that justice is at hand God is doing justice. I got a word about that this year. I saw the gavel coming down and he said, time's up. And I feel like that's also for the traffic, you know, human trafficking and sex slave industry and pedophilia, especially nine years, no more without my daughters, without money. Pray for all children to be released from abuse and neglect. Yes. Yes. This is what I was interceding with this girl, this beautiful lady for on Sunday, she was in deep travail. We, we we were really praying for this specifically, God. We just thank you, God, that we're, so many of us are crying out, God, for these children to be released. God, we, there's there's foster cares, families and, and good families being raised up right now to make a way to receive kids who need to come out of abuse and neglect. We just ask, God, that you would highlight the right ones and weed out the bad ones. Get anybody bad out of there, God. I know he's doing a big shaking and cleaning house. And we just pray, God, for for this lady. I don't see your name. Um, to, Ramona. 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 God, we ask you to bring her daughters back to her, God, in the name of Jesus, that where the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, you give us life and life abundant. I just speak abundant life over Ramona and over her family. I speak financial provision come forth in Jesus' name. All needs being met in the name of Jesus. God, you care about widows and orphans. You told us in your word that that's true religion is to take care of widows and orphans. And I really feel like in the church, we've lacked in doing that often. So I just ask God that the church would rise up, that the true church, which is without walls, it's the body of Christ, would 
would raise up and really take care of needs uh, in the community with women and, and children that have been abandoned and abused. And Lord, uh, pray for boldness. Who's this person? Donna. I see What's Donna. the name? Donna. What? Donna. Cora Bashan, that are bold like a lion, Lord, in Jesus' name. Donna, be bold like a lion. God, you said that the righteous are as bold as a lion. In Jesus' name, and we're righteous in you and our faith in you. So God bless Donna with boldness. I come against any meekness, any fear of man, any timidity, any lies of Satan that have tried to keep her quiet and silent, who any spirits or assignments of intimidation. I come against you in the name of Jesus and I break that off of her right now. Anything that happened when she was young that made her feel like she had to be quiet and that she wasn't worthy and that she couldn't speak up, I come against that lie and I break it off in the name of Jesus. I thank you for setting her free today. Hallelujah. With boldness. Pray for the youth of Canada and America that they will know truth and not drink the Kool-Aid. Amen. And it's not just the youth that are drinking the Kool-Aid. Have a biblical worldview of law, government, history, science, economics, sociology, politics, psychology, etc. God invented them all. Amen. I agree. I agree. We agree in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. A friend of mine, prophetic woman, Heather, she's also was serving at Expression 58, and she um, is called to education reform. So we've also been praying for that. You know, coming against this Marxist communist agenda that's actually been an agenda that's snuck in and they're very strategic and they've been really trying to poison the mind of our kids and ruin the family unit we break that in jesus name amen confusion on the enemy's camp we pray for the dismantling of evil strongholds in government amen we pray for the repentance or a changing of the guard yes and amen we pray for all in positions of authority yes thank you lord in jesus name you know even there are people like certain people like the mayor and the governor where I live that like, I am not in agreement with their politics, but we did pray for them. Yeah. We, we prayed for them. Amen. Look at what Jesus did with 12 cowardly disciples. <laughs> exactly. I just did a meme. I, somebody posted that meme and I stole it and posted it. Um, cause I loved it. It was like, like, look at, um, Moses. He had a stuttering problem and Abraham was a drunk and you know, they, they just went through all the people that God used. Rahab was a prostitute, you know, like all the people that were so flawed, but that God just used in a mighty way. Yes. They turned into fire brands for truth hallelujah and lord i do thank you that that sanctification process that your fire that deliverance does set us free that we do walk in victory that we're the old man and woman falls off in the name of jesus that the new man and woman come forth in the name of jesus please pray for identity in youth and all of us no more sexual skewed evil agendas purity Men, in Jesus' name, I agree. And I will give you a word that was encouraging to me. God showed me young men, specifically young men, like that he was raising up an army and that they were going to be walking in such purity and such holiness that they were going to not only be an example to young women of holiness and purity by treating them well and treating them right, but that even older men and were going to go, Wow. And they were going to watch these young ones and learn because a lot of the ones in my generation, they grew up in the seventies and sixties with the sexual revolution and all this junk and crud. And, you know, they weren't taught, they didn't have good role models. So these young ones are actually going to model for older ones. That's what the Lord showed me. Yes. Identity in Jesus. One of the biggest things the enemy does, the Lord showed me, is he comes against our identity in God. That's that's why he's saying, well, if you feel like a man, you're a man, even though you were given, born as a woman. And if you feel like you're a woman, you're a man. If you were a woman, if you were a man. And, and it's like, and if you feel like you're both, you're both. And, you know, it's like, if you feel like you're an ostrich, you can be an ostrich. No, we are not, you know, we were made the way God made us to be. Now, I had a godly friend remind me, she goes, some people are born with both genitalia what do you deal with that i'm like oh that's right that could be confusing then there might be a choice that needs to be made one way or the other but i i also know there was chernobyl there's sin in the world there's disease there's radioactive stuff there's all this stuff so i don't necessarily believe that 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 was god's intent that they were born that way sometimes things get in the way drugs chemicals, things can happen and make something, but God will still turn it around for good. He will turn everything around for good for those who love him, 
and are called according to his purposes. And that we know for sure. Um, and I know some young men like that. Amazing purity. Me too. He's raising them up. Now, I don't know why he highlighted men to me. Maybe it's because the girls were already, because women, we tend to follow men, you know, we're like, if a man loves us, he's got us, you know, if, if they treat us right, we're like, okay, purring in their lap, you know, um, usually, right? So I think it starts with the men. So Lord, we thank you for raising up godly men. We thank you also, God, for um, prodigals coming home in Jesus' name. Amen. Prod I got a song called Prodigals Are Coming Home that I wrote a few weeks ago. <laughs> you did. Hallelujah. Bring them home, Lord. Confirmation. Thank you, Jesus. They're coming. Oh, they are coming. They are coming. And you know what? My ex-husband is a prodigal. And I, I will tell this real quick because it was beautiful. So my heart was really hurt the way he left. And there were things that he opened up the doors to demonically. He, he left in a day with no notice, cleared the bank account really hurt it like really crushed me and it took a while to heal but the other day i was praying a few months ago and i said god i know i'm right with you now i trust you but i'm, I'm still having a hard time with trusting a man again i need you to heal my heart i don't know because people have prophesied that i'm going to get married again i'm like i don't know if i could i just don't know if i can open up again i need you to heal me the next day <laughs> My ex-husband called out of the blue, hadn't spoken in almost nine years. Wow. And he was praying in the spirit and he said, Sonia, I feel the Holy Spirit again. I feel so good. I was lost. And he said, and I, I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And he said, God told me to call you and tell you I'm sorry. Wow. So bless him. I've been praying for him. Wow. Hallelujah. Bless him. He was married. I don't know if he's still married. He got married again. So I just bless him. I'm not saying that, you know, he has to get back with me, whatever God's highest. But if he's married, he's married. I honor that. But but I was so blessed at that phone call that God's faithfulness and that and that he spoke to my husband and my husband heard and was obedient, my ex-husband. So hallelujah. Stop CSE in the USA, the evil UN agenda called Sogi in Canada. Yes, I agree. In Jesus' name, we come against that. Hallelujah. We do, God. Yeah, we break that assignment up in Jesus' name. We pray for the scales to fall off of people's eyes, for hearts to be softened in the name of Jesus, that these Luciferian people that are in high places, that are literally devil worshipers, that are using their communist Marxist agendas to try. There's like all of this junk, right? Evil in high places. People with hard hearts, the reptilian like, because they're the devil's children, they don't even care. There's just like this callousness. We pray, God, that the scales fall from their eyes and that those hardened hearts of stone turn to flesh in Jesus' name, that they have powerful, powerful mm -hmm. encounters with you that give them the fear of the Lord and that they realize that they're fighting against the wrong thing. In Jesus' name, you are God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords. So Lord, we just thank you. Yes, glory. I know it's so hot. Do you guys feel the heat? <laughs> I see the fire. I'm like, I feel it. Whew. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. So thank I feel like we need to pray for the, um, I felt like there was something there about the prodigals yeah. um, coming home. And uh, because all the people who walk in the evil in our world are really prodigals. Right. Mm -hmm. so if we want to pray over our families um, or those that like I, I listed out the other day and put their pictures into an uh, a, an album on my phone because mm -hmm. I was on the call was praying for families. And I had 15 because I have a large family. I had 15 people. Mm -hmm. I had to struggle with addiction. Mm -hmm. Far from God. The ones I'm concerned about. I actually have 60 some you know, nieces and nephews and then great nieces and nephews all together. I have 39 nieces and nephews and plus 25. So 53. So that's a lot of people plus siblings and, and lost family members. I have lost family members, guys, two family mm -hmm. members a year, you know. So we need to lift them up because, you know, we start to think that's how who they are. That's what they are. If you'd known even back then when your marriage ended, what you know now, it would have been different to pray to know how to pray. We didn't we didn't know how to pray. And mm. I feel like that's what we're still learning is how mm. to pray for mm. God to move in our families and how does mm. he want to use us? Because we're mm. always looking out there. We're always like, how can you use this out here? 
but it starts in the family. The power that we carry, the authority that we carry in God mm. starts in our home. When we see healing in our families, then we see breakthrough. So Sonia, um, if you wanted to pray for like, there's so many families represented here and we're yeah. all crying out for somebody turn their hearts yes thank you yeah thank you yes thank you lord well i agree with you stacy with your heart's cry right there you have you definitely have that family mountain call too lord i just thank you god for our loved ones our family members that you love even more than we do it's hard to imagine your love your love is so so big god we just thank you and we thank you for giving us more love in our hearts for the lost god that we have compassion um you left the 99 to go after the one and we just thank you god that you give us that heart of compassion for the one we pray for the one right now in our families represented that's walked away from you that's lost that got out of the sheepfold we pray god for your good shepherd's crook that little crook to just pull them back gently god it's your kindness that leads people to repentance so we thank you god we pray for harvesters other workers in the field to go out oh look at that little baby we just thank you god for more people in the fields to go out and to minister to our loved ones because sometimes a prophet is not received in their own home. So sometimes they don't listen to us. You know, we, we can't always be the messenger uh, to, to bring the prodigal home, but we thank you, God, that you send other people to our loved ones, cross their paths, spirit filled, anointed brothers and sisters in Christ, angels, God, and you even spoke through donkeys. So like whoever you got to use, God, we just ask you to speak through people that to speak the truth and love and it will get our loved ones back on track with you. And Lord, we just speak forgiveness over them. We release, we break shame off of people. The prodigals, I think that's a big thing. There's shame and torment and the lie that like, well, it's too late. I knew better and I screwed up. Now there's no hope for me. That's a lie in Jesus name. You know, I mean, God took the prodigal back after he was in a lot of depravity and a lot of rebellion and he gave him a royal robe. Yeah, and he just loved on him. So, and, a, and he gave him the ring back. Unity in families, amen. Yeah, God, I thank you for healing families. That's a tough one, you know, because um, how Jesus said, you know, the, um, a man will, like a father will be against his, his son and a mother against the mother and a mother against a daughter against the daughter, mother-in-law. And like, sometimes there is division and it's really painful, but I think it's kind of goes back to that. You know, when you're walking with the spirit, when you have the Holy spirit and if they have a different spirit, there's going to be a clash. So we just thank you for deliverance for our loved ones. We thank you for, you know, getting those, any demonic strongholds broken off of them for the truth to set them free in Jesus name so that we can walk in unity, God, by your spirit. We pray for softening of hearts and Lord, the lies. Another thing I've been learning in the past couple of years that has really transformed my walk and my life is realizing that God has been getting blamed for a lot of the devil's work. You know, a lot of people don't like God because they say, well, why do babies die? Well, why did my mom die of cancer? If God's so good, why didn't he heal her? Why does he allow cancer? Why does he allow disease or early death or destruction? I used to believe that. My dad was killed when I was young. I've been through a lot of accidents, had a lot of hardship. But then I realized John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life more abundantly. So, Lord, we speak life abundant over everyone on here and over all of our loved ones and all of our family members in Jesus' name. And remember, the power of life and death is in our tongue. So when we're angry, sometimes we have to hold, be careful what we speak, quickly repent, because our mouths we have power. There's life and death. There's blessings and curses that can come out of our own mouth. So right now, God, if any of us have opened up our mouths and spoken out of frustration and anger and hurt and wounding over our loved ones, let us repent. Let us, let us cancel any curses that we spoke in Jesus' name. And let us speak blessing instead. Let us speak forgiveness instead in Jesus' name. Help heal our hearts, God, because out of the heart the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so heal our hearts so that we be filled with your spirit that we be filled with your love and your truth 
so that we can speak the truth in love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good, God. You're so loving. He's so good. But you know, he's also been showing me, he's very direct. Like I realized this year, I'm like, he didn't mince words. He called them a brood of vipers. He said, you, you don't have the things of the fa your father in my, or he said, you don't have the things of the father in heaven because you're a child of the devil. You have the things of your father in mind. <laughs> he just called it like it was. You flip tables, you know, you brood of vipers, you whitewash tombs. I love Jesus. I love that about him because let's get real. You know, you got to be able to call out evil. When people are doing evil, we have to call it out. We had, just like somebody said, I think it was on shrewd as serpents, innocent as doves. Mm -hmm. We have to be as shrewd as serpents, innocent as doves. That means we don't sin in your anger. Do not sin. But that doesn't mean we don't get angry. Jesus got angry. That's another lie that's been woven into the church is, oh, well, I sinned. You sinned. You got angry. Anger is not a sin. It's what we do with our anger. If we sin, like we go murder someone or we go hit someone or we curse someone with our mouth, you know, we hold unforgiveness and bitterness, that's sinning with our anger. So, you know, but righteous anger is healthy and it's it's necessary. We live in a world where there is evil. And if you don't get angry at, at abuse and neglect and people, I love direct Jesus too. If we don't get angry at that, we're going to have a problem. We have to, that's justice. We have to come against the evil. But it's like you always say, Stacey, and we, we talk about it a lot, but remember, we're not fighting the flesh and the blood. And, and if you think about this with the apostle Paul, before his conversion, he was killing Christians, totally black, like hated them, was persecuting them, with, like had hatred in his heart, right? So he seemed like a really evil guy doing the devil's work. But God blinded him. Scales fell from his eyes. He had the road to Damascus experience. He's one of the best, the biggest apostles that we we have as an example in the Bible, who wrote most of the New Testament. Yeah. So I wonder, the Acts, the power of God, the Holy Spirit fell. You know, so it's like if you know we we don't know the end from the beginning. So somebody can look really evil, but I always still pray for them. You know, um, but I don't. I don't placate it either. I don't, I don't validate evil. I don't say it's okay because it's not. But I pray that they'll have a Saul of Tarsus experience. And then I pray for justice. I say, God, deliver them, set them free, turn them around, change the guard. But if they do not, I still ask, remove them because I don't want those children, those innocent people being wounded and injured and hurt. So I say, remove them, protect them in Jesus name. Yes. An army of mama bears to protect our children and our families and faith and freedom. We get, need to get on our knees before God, then up onto our feet in action. Amen. I like this. Judy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, are we, I don't even know if we are. I've been open to a bunch of new requests. So a lot of times I just kind of look at the feed real quick to see, I think this is a godly person. Yes. I see they have mutual friends. I'm going to say yes. So a lot of times I meet friends on here that I haven't met, you know, but Lord bless the ladies on here, that mama bear fierce, wow. righteous anger that rises up to protect and let us fight on our knees. Like Judy said, in prayer, let us, let us recognize the authority you have given us and be encouraged by that and stand in faith, knowing that when we decree it, according to his will, it shall be done. Amen. And we do not back down from the devil. We do not, we're not afraid of him, you know, in Jesus' name, because we have authority. We have the victory. I think he's running it from it, from us when we walk outside. When we, when we open our mouth, he's running from us. He's like, oh, crap. I remember somebody said, huh? I just want to throw this in. And when we're on this topic, as mamas, a lot of times, and even in my, my family growing up with siblings, the nieces and nephews and my own children, the word that keeps popping in my brain as we're talking and praying here is enabling. Oh. And, um, we, we don't even realize we're enabling. Mm. But I just want to bring that up before we close in prayer because there is something about 
enabling that blocks God from doing his work in our families. Totally. Well, it's like us playing God. When yeah. we think that we, when we, even though it's compassion, when we interfere and want to intervene right. and like try to save somebody, right. we're cutting off the process. Now, I mean, if it's a little child and they're about to run across the street, of course you jump in there. But when people get to be, you know, there, there's an age of accountability. There's an age, you know, where we're like, okay, you're making, and even in good parenting, you know, right? It's like when your child does something, you teach them like, that's not okay. There's a punishment. You, you teach them to, to learn them. Hey, hey, Mary, thank you. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's so hot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we teach them the way they go because, because to not discipline is, is very, is, like you said, is, it's enabling. And, and the other side of enabling is, oh, is he wearing a mustache? <laughs> what is that? So cute. And then the other part of that is, is trying to step in and save people and keep them from falling. Sometimes you learn, like if a little child keeps on wanting to do something, you know, they're going to, if they keep on running and they keep falling, they learn like, oh, unless I go slow, I'll fall. And when I fall, it hurts when I skin my knee. You know, sometimes you have to learn through experience. And I think that requires just great wisdom, right? And I think also you know, like seeing it out. Like my biggest thing was wanting to be nice, love them, thinking I'm loving them, and I'm actually watching them die in front of my eyes. Oh, that is brutal. Or watching them wreck their lives. And yeah. there's something that needs to shift. In the church, in our lives, that says no more enabling. Amen. We even enable ourselves. Like I was reheating my tea for almost 20 years, guys. And God spoke to me through my daughter, and it's been almost three months, and I do not reheat my tea now. And that's a huge, huge shift and breakthrough, even though it seems small. Because what it says to me is that I can stop enabling myself. To read and you know, like just admit that that he's driving the cat's tail. <laughs> <laughs> I think I froze. Oh, I can't see. Yes, you are frozen, but I can hear your voice. Okay, I just moved my computer because it was running out of um, battery, so I had to plug it in. Oh, that might be why. Pray it comes back in Jesus' name. Come back in Jesus' I'll name. I'll take you out of the thing and put you back in. Just a minute. See if Helps. Now it's black. Let's see. How do I get back in? Uh, Jesus, bring me back. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Well, well, I just want to finish that and then we can finish in prayer because the enabling thing, I feel it goes deep. Yes. For us personally. Yeah. For us in our marriages. Yeah. For us in our mothering. For us in our being children and our parents like yeah. there's something about that guys that i just lift up right now that god would touch you touch me to go even deeper yeah. where am i enabling where am i not standing in and saying this is enough sure. where am i not drawing the line in the sand god has shown us and we know it in our spirit i pray that our spirits align with our soul and our body come underneath that our spirits align in the throne of god and our soul and our body comes under alignment with our spirit connecting in throne room so that we will know the power of god in our lives that so will flow out so that we're not like oh i don't like them like i have to deal with a lot of situations right now so i'm speaking from my own life guys no more enabling and that's that you know Call me on it. Write me. How is it going, Stacy? this week? You know, I really want to change this in my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose any more family needlessly because no. I didn't step in and say something or I didn't uh, show them I care about them in some way that God said, write, write them, call them, bless them. Mm. Father God, I thank you for what you are doing right now. I feel it. you here. Oh, just a second. I've got to grab the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just a second. There, go, 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 go. Thank you, Jesus. 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 I don't know why my thing is still black. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, yes, I thank you, God, that we can trust you with our loved ones. And it's it's even like um, he's been really really dealing me on not even loving our lives into the death. And really, Lord, the most important thing is just knowing like this life, you know, is as long as it is, but eternity we get to spend with you and our loved ones get eternity with you. So Lord, I want to just break off any fear in Jesus name. And I also want to God break off any curse for early death in Jesus name. And I want to break off addiction in Jesus name. And I just, I thank you, God, that you set the captives free in Jesus' name. God, we do, we do have an enemy. He is a roaring, roaring around looking who he can seek to steal, kill, and destroy. But we stand in the gap for our loved ones, God. And even when they're, when they don't realize it and they're deceived and they're opening up the door um, to darkness through wrong choices, through addiction, we just thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus covers over every every sin every nook and cranny and god we just thank you for calling forth truth we just say we just speak protection over our loved ones who are lost and we say that they will all come back into the fold in jesus name we decree that the enemy will not take one more early in jesus name amen amen Ronya, i don't know what's happening here for the, <laughs> your video but I, we are so blessed to have you tonight. Um, is there somewhere that, um, is there anything you want to share? Like, you have a testimony that you've also done on, what's his name, Andrew? Andrew Whalen. Yeah, on I was on his, uh, my testimony with um, Vanquish Prophetic Warriors. And yeah. then on, on my Facebook page, Sonia Ann, A-N-N, I, I share, do lives, and there's been a lot of times I've, shared some testimony throughout the last year on there and on video if anybody wants to watch and be ministered i do sometimes pray in the holy spirit and just whatever holy spirit gives me to pray and prophesy whatever scripture he gives me it's so cool when you you know it's him because a lot of times i'll just say a bunch of stuff and i don't know what i'm gonna say and then i go back and, and i listen i'm like oh that was in this scripture and that was the scripture <laughs> and then i know it was god because he's given me his word you know um, his word Sonia, I just want to bless you. Thank you for what you walk in. Thank you for um, mm. just empower so much. I, I know there's going to be even more that God's flowing out of you in this next mm. season. And we just pray a blessing on your ministry of what God released this last year and that mm. it will just multiply, bring in the roaring lions with the mm. hearts for God. And I just thank you, Father God, the plans you have over Sonia's life. Mm. In your precious name, Jesus. And mm. thank you, everyone, for coming on tonight to share with us. Sonia, could you pray to close? Um, yes. Lord, bless Stacy. Bless her ministry. Bless her heart to connect hearts together. God, bless this ministry page. Bless her family. Bless her um, heart for women also, God. I just thank you that you're connecting like-minded women in your kingdom. Bless every woman that came on and that's going to come on, and every man, whoever has a heart who wants to be on here. Bless you, Mary. God, thank you, Jesus, so much for what you're doing. Thank you for your fire. Thank you for raising fierce mama bear up in this hour. Thank you for teaching us your authority and how to pray in the spirit with your authority according to your word and knowing that the atmosphere is changing, that we are taking ground for the kingdom of God, that this nation is changing, that Canada is changing, that this world is changing for the great revival. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Zachary says amen. <laughs> amen, Zachary. <laughs> Love, Love you, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you too. Good night, guys. We'll see you Thursday. Good night. Bye. Bye.